Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Norris, and today, in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to share the story of an amazing woman named Elsa Schiaparelli. In the story Bloom, we hear the story of Elsa Schiaparelli, and the story Bloom was written in 2018 by Keo McClear, and, the, and it was illustrated by Julie Morstad. And this tells the story of a fashion designer named Elsa Schiaparelli. And if you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Bloom, the, a story of fashion designer Elsa Schiaparelli. Every story starts somewhere. My story begins on September 10th, 1890, in a beautiful palazzo in the center of Roma. That's in Italy. Imagine a quiet room. Imagine a newborn baby looking up to see her papa frowning, her mama frowning. It's all wrong for me. I'm sorry. Disappointed that I am not a boy, they have no name for me. They borrow a name from a nurse, Elsa. They say it like this, Elsa. It's all wrong for me. Now I am frowning. So Elsa was born a very long time ago, and her parents were slightly disappointed that she was a boy, and they didn't have a name picked out for her because she they thought and hoped that she would be a boy. One day, I snuggle deep in my carriage. I am alone except for the flowers. All around, they are waving and smiling. Hello! All I see is pink. Bright, bold, shocking pink. The color swirls inside me. My home is dark and gray. But it doesn't matter because all around Roma, there's color and joy. So even as a baby... Elsa was drawn to the colors around her, even though her home was dark and gray. My sister Beatrice is Mama's favorite. She is 10 years older. Bella, Mama says. And me? Bruta. I hate to have my picture taken. So Elsa's mom compares her sister and Elsa and... She thinks her sister is beautiful and that she's a brute. Visiting Roma's flower market one morning, I lose myself in a dazzling stream of colors, shapes, and smells. Ah, sweet canella, fragrant malone, a bouquet of fiori. Bold beauty, quiet beauty, hidden beauty. By the age of seven, I wonder, what makes something beautiful? Will I ever be as pretty as a peony, as confident as a daisy? A seed seller pins a flower to my dress. It is strange but wonderful. He has given me an idea. So she goes to the flower market and a flower is pinned to her dress and now she has an idea. Still wondering what makes things beautiful. I run home to see the family gardener. The next day, I plant flower seeds in my ears, mouth, and nose. To have a face covered with flowers like a heavenly garden would indeed be a wonderful thing. I sit and wait. Wait to bloom. Wait to bloom. By nightfall, I am breathless and sick. It takes two doctors to remove the seeds. My plan flops, but a different kind of seed is planted. A seed of wild imagination. So she thought she could grow flowers all over her face by planting seeds in her, in her nose and her ears and her mouth. And it just ended up making her sick. But it planted the idea of creativity. <clears throat> that summer, my family travels to Milano to visit Uncle Giovanni. Uno, du. Tre, my sister counts the seven moles on my left cheek. Giovanni is a famous astronomer, a dreamer. We spend hours together peering through his telescope at the stars. 
Well, there are people on Mars just like us, he says. They are probably making polenta right now. Oh, come on, Mikara, he says. Voilamo, let's fly. I still feel bruta, but my uncle lifts me up, up, up. He tells me my moles are as beautiful as the Big Dipper. So her uncle, the astronomer, makes her feel special and beautiful with her constellation of moles. Back at home, with an umbrella in my hand, I leap out a third floor window. I imagine soaring like da Vinci's flying machine before landing in the gardener's manure pile. Ideas are everywhere I look, among the books in my father's library, among the trunks of dresses and objects belonging to my mother in the attic. I am an explorer, a circus performer, and even the night sky. Dress up, pretend, make believe. The world feels brighter. I am growing into an artist. So she has quite, Elsa has quite an imagination and she uses the things around her to make believe and pretend and dress up. And she's becoming what she wanted to be, an artist. <clears throat> but to be an artist, it takes money. At age 22, I take a job in England as a nanny. On a brief stop in Paris, a friend invites me to a ball. With a few, with a few francs, I go to a department store and, presto, I design my first dress. It is held together with a few pins. No time to sew. I am a queen floating and sailing across the dance floor. Until, dun, dun, dun. The pins give way. She's designed a beautiful dress, but the pins have fallen out. The dress is a disaster, but my passion for dressmaking is sparked. Moving from city to city, Paris, London, and finally New, and finally New York, seven years hurtle by. Nothing is permanent, but one thing remains constant. I keep making clothes. For myself, for my friends, for my new husband. We are together only briefly. For my darling baby daughter, Gogo. I draw my ideas on paper, making up my own rules along the way. It is 1921, and now I call myself Shep. Can I do what I love and still provide for Gogo? To be an artist is to dream big and to risk failure. So she's, <clears throat> Elsa's moved around a lot and has a little baby daughter named Gogo, and she realizes that to be an artist, she must, be, she must take risks. Gogo is two in 1922 when I decide to return to Paris. I am broke, nervous, excited, and ready to burst. But it's time to show the world my sketches. I start each morning filled with hope, braving rejection, stumbling home on tired legs. I want to give up, but I don't. I will not be beaten. In my heart, Uncle Giovanni is cheering me on. So Elsa and Gogo go back to Paris. <clears throat> Our cold water apartment is dreary, but friendship lifts me. Through my pal Gabby Picabia, I fall in love with a pack of artists. Salvador Dali says, we must be outrageous. Paul Poirier says, we are artists, not dressmakers. Picasso says, children are our teachers. Merritt Oppenheim says, let us take our freedom. And Albert Giacometti says, we must fail if we want to succeed. And Gogo says, like this, Picasso, we share our crazy dreams. I'd like to dream with artists. <clears throat> One day, I'm introduced to Mike, a knitting maestra. If I make a design, will you try to knit it, I ask? We will try, she says. We try and try. I am more determined than ever until... 
Finally! Sensational! My big breakthrough, trompe l'iole. We have created the illusion of a bow knot. Women go wild for the modern design. So she's designed a shirt and her friend has helped make it. And people go crazy for this, this outfit that makes it look like you have a bow tied around your neck. At the late blooming age of 37, I opened my first shop. It is soon the beating heart of Paris. The new world is buzzing. Women don't want to just sit around looking pretty. They want to dream and do bold things. My unique clothes invite women to express their imaginations fully. So you can see her little Schiaparelli shop that makes women dream. A thread of doubt remains inside me. I know Mama, Papa, and Beatrice and Roma will never approve of the path I have taken. But I no longer feel bruta. For the first time, I see the beauty of my art reflected in the world. So she's still worried that her family won't like what she's doing, but she doesn't feel badly about herself anymore. Boundless, unstoppable, my fingers itch to combine the strangest materials. Why not? Why not lace with leather, wool with cellophane, tree bark and velvet? A face of flowers may be impossible, but why not a shoe on my head, a coat with many drawers, a lobster dress? I say no to the expected. I say yes to my childhood dreams and the colors that once fed me, scarlet, mauve, periwinkle, green. She feeds her dreams. She dreams like from when she was a kid, and she creates those things in real life. And pink. My friend, the, the chemist, Jean Clement, helps me mix a new color for my next collection of dresses and hats. Jean adds more red. Not quite, I say. We mix again to blue and again until perfection the color flashed in front of my eyes bright impossible impudent becoming life-giving like all the light and the birds and the fish in the world put together so she's invented a new color just for her collection and it's it's giving it's giving her everything it's giving her life it's giving her everything. And it's pretty. Wild and explosive. I call it shocking pink. The fashion world spins with panic and delight. So people are a little afraid, but also a little excited. Not everything I make is a success, but through my work, a wondrous thing happens. I free, I free myself from Mama's harsh words and Papa's judgment. I free myself to be daring, different, and whole. I plant a new seed of beauty. Beauty itself blooms to reveal the irregular, the imperfect, the smart, tough, goofy, surreal, and wild. The women I inspire and the women who inspire me and the girl I was who once felt so ugly that she planted seeds on her face. All of us together, we bloom and bloom. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a picture of the real life Elsa Scaparelli and her interesting hats and some of her other designs. Ooh, look at those hair, hair, those hats. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really enjoyed the story, Bloom, a story of fashion designer Elsa Schiaparelli. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down there at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Howie family who loaned me an amazing collection of books that, that I've been able to share with you, my YouTube watchers. 
and I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.